Welcome to the second part of the lesson on describing data. In this lesson, we will be discussing quartiles, the five number summary, box plots, as well as percentiles. The final measure of variability we must consider are the quartiles. Whereas the standard deviation was a measure of spread based around the mean, the quartiles are a measure of spread based around the median. The quartiles are the values that divide the data into quarters. The first quartile, or Q1, is the value so that 25% of the data values are below it, meaning 25% between the minimum and quartile one. The third quartile, or Q3, is the value so that 75% of the data values are below it, and 25% are above. So here's quartile three, where 75% of the data is between the minimum and quartile three, and 25% is between Q3 and the maximum. And quartile two is the same as the median, where 50% of the data values are below it and 50% are above. The median is here. This divides the data into quarters. 25% of the data is between the minimum and Q1. 25% is between Q1 and Q2, or Q1 and the median. 25% is between Q2 and Q3. And 25% is between Q3 and the maximum. Now I do want to mention the T84 does not use the locator method to determine Q1 and Q3, which is the method we need to use on our homework. So we cannot rely on the T84 to always give us the correct Q1 and Q3. So let's review the locator method. To find quartile one using the locator method, we first order the data from least to greatest, and then we compute the locator L equals 0.25 times N. If L is a decimal, we round up to the next whole number, which we call L plus, and we use the data value in this position as quartile one. If L is a whole number, then to find Q1, we have to find the mean or average of the data values in the Lth and L plus oneth positions. Similarly, to find Q3, we follow a similar procedure except we use L equals 0.75 times N. While quartiles are not a one number summary of variation like range, the quartiles are used with the median, minimum, and maximum to form what's called the five number summary. So the five number summary consists of the minimum, Q1, the median or Q2, Q3, and the maximum. Let's look at the example below. We're asked to find the five number summary of the data in the table. Step one is to order the data from least to greatest and then count the number of data values, which in this case is 10. And now to find the five number summary, we know the minimum is 17, we know the maximum is 100. The next step is to find the median, because we have an even number of data values. The median is the average of the two middle values, 59 and 75 are in the middle, because there are four values to the left and four values to the right. So now we find the mean of these two data values, which is shown here, the median is 67. And now we need to find Q1 and Q3 using the locator method. For Q1, we first find L equals 0.25 times N, where N is 10, the number of data values. This comes out to 2.5. We round this up to the next whole number, which is three. The value in the third position is quartile one, which we can see would be 23. And now to find Q3, we use L equals 0.75 times 10 which is equal to 7.5, because we have a decimal, we round up to eight. The data value in the eighth position is quartile three. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 84 is in the eighth position, 84 is Q3, and we have the five number summary. Let's take a look at two more examples of this. Again, we're asked to find the five number summary. Step one is to order the data and count the number of data values. Here we have 11 data values in order from least to greatest. So right away we know the min is five, the max is 86. Now let's find the median. Because we have an odd number of data values, the median is one of the data values. It's the one in the middle, which is the 59, because there are five values to the left and five values to the right of 59. So 59 is the median. And now we need to find Q1 and Q3. 
using the locator method. For Q1, we first find L equals 0 0.25 times N, which is 11, which is equal to 2.75. Because we have a decimal, we round up to the next whole number, which is 3. Q3 is in the third position, which means 22 is quartile 1. Now we need to find Q3 or quartile 3, again using the locator method. So we have L equals 0 0.75 times N, which is 11. 0 0.75 times 11 is equal to 8.25, because we have a decimal. We round up to 9. Quartile 3 is in the ninth position. So we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 81 is quartile 3. And now we have our five number summary. Let's take a look at our second example. Here we have 12 data values. Step one is to order the data from least to greatest, which I've already done. By the way, we know the min is 11, the max is 97. Now let's find the median. Because we have an even number of data values, we have two middle data values, which we have to find the mean of to find the median. The two middle values are 56 and 70, because there are five values to the left and five values to the right. So the median is equal to the quantity 56 plus 70 divided by 2 which is equal to 126 divided by 2, which is 63. So the median, or Q3, is 63. And now we need to find Q1 and Q3 using the locator method. So for Q1, we have L equals 0 0.25 times 12. Well, 0 0.25 times 12 is equal to 3. Because L is a whole number, we now need to find the mean of the terms or data values in the third and fourth positions. The third and fourth positions are the 22 and 33. So 22 plus 33 divided by 2 is equal to 27.5. Q1 is 27.5. And now for Q3. We have L equals 0 0.75 times 12, which is equal to 9. Again, because we have a whole number, Q3 is going to be the mean of the values in the ninth and tenth positions, which would be the mean or average of 85 and 86, which is going to be 85.5. And now we have the five number summary. It is often difficult to picture how the five number summary shows the variability in a data set. For visualizing data, there's a graphical representation of the five number summary called a box plot or box and whisker graph. A box plot is a graphical representation of a five number summary. To create a box plot, which is pictured here below, we first draw a number line and then a box is drawn from quartile 1 to the third quartile, and a line is drawn through the box at the median. The whiskers are extended out to the min and max values. So looking at this box plot here, we have the minimum, we have quartile 1, we have the median, we have quartile 3, and we have the maximum. Following the directions, we first form a box or rectangle from Q1 to Q3, and then we draw a line at the median, and then we extend lines, which are the whiskers, out to the max and out to the minimum. Let's go back and create a box and whisker plot for the two previous examples, which we have here. So let's clear some of our work. The first step is to form a number line, which must go from 5 to 86. I'm going to go ahead and go from 0 to 90. And it does need to be scaled correctly, so let's go ahead and scale this by tens. We begin by plotting quartile 1 and quartile 3, which is 22 and 81. So 22 would be approximately here. 
81 is just past 80 here. We'll go ahead and form a rectangular box using these two endpoints. And then we cut the box at the median, which is 59. So we draw a line segment here at 59. The minimum is five, which would be here on the left. The maximum is 86, which is approximately here. We use these points to form the whiskers. So we draw a segment there on the right, a segment on the left, and sometimes you'll also see a little vertical segment here and here. There is the box and whisker plot for the first data set. Now for the second data set, the number line has to include 11 all the way to 97. Let's go from 0 to 100. So we have 0 on the right, 100 on the left. We'll divide this into equal intervals. Let's go ahead and scale this by 25s. First step is to plot Q1 and Q3. So 27 and a half, 27.5 would be approximately here. 85.5 approximately here form the box or the rectangle cut the box at the median 63 be approximately here minimum is 11 let's say 11 is here 97 is just short of 100 and we form the whiskers And now let's look at some examples of analyzing box and whisker plots. The box plot below shows the salaries for actuaries and CPAs. Notice how the salary is given in thousands of dollars. Trevor makes the minimum salary for an actuary. Josh makes the third quartile salary for a CPA. Who makes more money and by how much? So again, Josh makes the minimum salary for an actuary. So here's the box plot for the actuary. The minimum salary for an actuary is $40,000. Josh makes you third quartile for a CPA. So we have the minimum Q1, Q2, and Q3. Here's Q3, which we can see is $85,000. So now we know that Josh makes $85,000 a year and Trevor makes $40,000 a year. So of course Josh makes more money. And by how much? We just find the difference. 85,000 minus 40,000 is equal to 45,000. So now we know that Josh makes $45,000 more a year than Trevor. The dollar sign is already here we only enter 45,000. For our next question, the box plot below shows the salaries for construction workers and teachers. So we have construction workers on the top, teachers on the bottom. If a person is making the median salary for a construction worker, they are making more than what percent of teachers? So the median salary for a construction worker would be this salary here, which is $45,000. And the question is, the person making this salary would make more than what percent of teachers? We need to figure out what percent of teachers are below 45,000, or on our number line, below 45. Well, remember, there is 25% of the data between the min and Q1, this interval. There's 25% between Q1 and the median, this interval. And there's 25% of the data between the median and Q3, which means a construction worker making the median salary of $45,000 is making more than 75% of teachers. And now let's discuss our last topic of percentiles. Percentiles are used in statistics to indicate a value below which a certain percentage of the data values fall. For example, if you score in the 60th percentile on a standardized test, it means that 60% of the scores were lower than yours and 40% were higher. Let's look at some examples. In general, what percent of data values in a data set lie at or below the median? Remember, the median is right in the middle, where 50% is below and 50% is above the median. 
So we can say in general, 50% of the data values in a data set lie at or below the median. Next, what percent of values in a data set lie at or below the third quartile? So going back to this bar, we know this is the median. Quartile one would be approximately here. Quartile three would be approximately here, where we have the max on the right and the min on the left. So we're trying to figure out what percent is below Q3. Well, we have 25% between the min and Q1, 25% between Q1 and the median, and 25% between the median and Q3. So we have 75% of the data values lie at or below the third quartile. Of course, we also have 25% between Q3 and the max. So next, if a sample consists of 1,200 test scores, how many of them would be at or below the second quartile? Well, we already said the median is the same as quartile two. So there's going to be 50% at or below quartile two. We define 50% of 1,200. 50% of 1,200 is equal to 0 0.5 times 1,200, which is equal to 600. So 600 of them will be at or below quartile two. If a sample consists of 1,200 test scores, how many of them would be at or above the first quartile? Well, 75% of the data values would be at or above Q1. So now we need to find 75% of 1,200. which is 0 0.75 times 1,200, which is equal to 900. Notice how this question involved quartiles, but quartiles can be viewed as percentiles. Let's look at one more example. Again, we're asked to complete the following statements. In general, what percent of the data values in a data set lie at or below the 94th percentile? So if you score on the 94th percentile, it would be, let's say, approximately here, where 90% of the scores are at or below your score, which means 6% are at or above your score. So in general, 94% of the data values in a data set lie at or below the 94th percentile. The next question involves the 70th percentile which would be approximately here, where 70% of the scores are at or below the score, and 30% are at or above that score. So it says what percent of the values lie at or above the 70th percentile? That would be 30%. Two more. If a sample consists of 900 test scores, how many of them would be at or below the 78th percentile? So if this is the 78th percentile, 78% of the scores are at or below this score, and 22% are at or above this score. And we are looking for the number of test scores at or below the 78th percentile, which would be 78% of 900, which is equal to 0 0.78 times 900, which is equal to 702. 702 of the 900 test scores would be at or below the 78th percentile. The last question involves the 46th percentile. Let's say that would be approximately here, where 46% of the scores would be at or below this score, and 54% would be at or above this score. So of the 900 test scores, how many of them would be at or above the 46th percentile? 54% of them would be we need to find 54% of 900, which is equal to 0 0.54 times 900, which is equal to 486. I hope you found this helpful.